So in this haircut, we're going to be doing an increased layer, a teardrop bob. These are the finished articles that you're going to be creating, styled two different ways. Straight, wavy, very on trend right now, very good for any kind of colour with balayage or foils. We're trying to make a, a conscious effort to make sure that this is very salon friendly education stuff that you can replicate back in the salon and done in a time frame that's, that fits within normal working hours of whether it be a half an hour, 45 or an hour appointments, however that suits. The scissors we're going to be using today for this haircut is the Stingray. We're going to be using a Manta Ray and then we're going to introduce the Anaconda. Sectioning pattern, we have our fringe sectioned out. Triangle section we've taken to the outside of the eye. It's as wide as you can take it with the fringe. We've done a centre nape all through the middle, ear to ear section on the side. But what we've also done is we've taken a radial section all the way through on the ridge of the head. And this is to segregate the underneath the head from the top of the head. We're going to use this for length, but it's something we're going to tackle at the very end of the haircut. We're going to work on the internal part of the texture first. The first section we're going to work on is a center profile section. Now this is created by using a slither of hair either side of the center nape you've created. What we're going to do is use this section, create our guide, then work on the top left panel first, everything back into the middle, then work top right panel, everything back into the middle. This is going to create an increased layer. So with your center profile section, you're going to pick it straight up using the shallow tooth of your comb for extra tension. Pull it square up. Now you're going to drop this down and see where it sits on the face. Wherever this sits on the face is where your short, shortest layer is going to sit. Straight up, square fingers. We're going to go through the three C's, which is comb, check, Cut, so I've checked where it is, combed, good tension, cut. I'm only going to cut to my knuckle. Don't cut, cut past your knuckle because there isn't any tension in that area. Move on, square up, and you notice that this is completely square. Next section, cut. Once that is done, I'm going to work on the section closest to me first. Small section. Parallel to the line you've created with the center nape. Comb up gently, shallow tooth comb, fingers in, pull it straight up. Now you want to be checking to make sure the middle part of your section is square from the head and everything is being over-directed into that section. To your guideline. Cut. Next section. Small slither again. So all these sections are, I use cone widths, are less than half a cone width. So they're coming about that deep. And every time it's being pushed back into the section, it's really vital that you're pushing the hair back into the section rather than combing back on yourself. If you comb back on yourself, you see the slack in there, it means your guideline is never going to be true. So pushing the hair back into itself, straight up, comb, check, Cut. Same again, pushing it back up, making sure that that middle section is always square. Cut. What you're going to do is keep working on all the way through this section until you run out of hair and you hit your radial section above here. So while Tom's cutting that, we're going to explain a little bit about the scissor we're using. This is the Manta Ray, which is a 5.5 inch precision cutter. It has two bevel edges on it, really, really strong. So what happens with it is it cuts with zero push and movement. You notice when Tom's using that, he literally, to cut a straight line, can open and close it two or three times. It has like a long handle with short blades, so it gets lots of leverage and power through there. It's scissor that can only be used for precision cutting when we're doing this. Tom, if you were going to make this a little bit looser, I notice you're using like a blunt cut now. Yep. If you were to do something a little bit different, like in terms of really the point cutting with it, would that create more expansion absolutely. through the hair? Yeah, absolutely. The more you point cut, the more texture and weight you alleviate from the hair, uh, the more expansion you'll get in the haircut. Yeah. So what would happen there is if you're using, you'd use a different scissor, like a point cutting scissor for that, it creates more expansion with it. So that's sort of why we use this scissor for it, because it's going to be very, very precise. As you say with Tom as well, you'll notice he doesn't cut past that second knuckle because of the tension. So now this section is done. I've resectioned my center profile section, and now I'm going to move on to top right. What a lot of people try and do now is I'll go this side, cut out to in, which expands the shape while this side I've collapsed. 
So I'm gonna still be standing on the same side as which I've cut the first section, and I'm gonna feed the hair back into this section while pulling back into the section this side. So what we're now doing now, we're getting our videographer to actually just reverse the image, because Tom <laughs> is actually coming around to this side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when you're trying to get around that side, you wanna try and keep one foot planted if you can, to make sure everything you bring back, you're always centered in the middle of that section all the time. You can move around if you know exactly where you've planted your left foot. So what I try and do is keep my left foot planted, spin my right, go behind the head, take a section, come back to my left. My body's always centered back in the same position where I first started. Is this from your basketball days where you don't want to get called for travel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm netball, netball. Though, sorry. <laughs> As if you're cool enough to yeah. play basketball. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> so now I've got my section. Well, previously on this side, I was pushing the hair into the middle. I want to create the same tension. So this time we pull him from the outside into the middle. So come the outside, still using my shallow tooth, all the way up, maintaining a square line here, check, and then cut. Same again, moving across. So the beauty of using the manta ray when we're doing this um, is a lot of the time most scissors, they tend to want to push the hair. So a habit would be to start pulling back when we're doing it. And so you're actually creating a straight line with a series of small lines. With this, you'll notice that Tom can actually open the blade, close it, and he knows that it's going to be level, clean, and straight the whole way through. It's going to give it a whole lot cleaner result. And as long as Tom is following his three C's, which is his combing, the checking, that cut bit becomes really, really easy, and it's precise every time. So you'll see now with this section that Tom's got, as he pulls that up, he's combed it, he's now checking it, and then with the cut, you'll notice the picking and bang. It's just one cut rather than that series of pulling back. It allows for it to be an absolutely perfect clean straight line whenever you're doing it. Don't go past that second knuckle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at you go. Perfect. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> so moving through to this section. Clean line. -ish. It's very good, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> Straight up, so I've combed. Check in, you can clearly see my guideline there. Go. Moving on. And notice so I don't really mind what drops out here. I don't need it, it's already cut. Last section on this side. So when I get through to this last section, what I tend to do, because I've gone below the roundest part of the head, I'll switch to a wide tooth on my comb. The only reason why, when you get through to medium and thick densities of hair, you'll struggle to get a shallow tooth through. So to wide tooth, comb, check. You can see I've not got much hair to come off here. Cut. Notice everything I'm doing is square to the floor. My fingers, comb, scissor. <clears throat> and that's your top two sections done. I want to talk a little bit about scissor grips now when we're holding the scissor. You'll notice Tom's positioning with his fingers. If he spins around and shows you how his thumb's placed, it's really important. See the thumb? how it's not pushed directly into the scissor. If Tom had to push his thumb directly into that scissor, his wrist position would be like this, which is terrible, terrible posture. Also gonna give you kangaroo paws when you get older. So it's a matter of pulling the thumb out. You know that they notice they have like an ergonomic little shape in here, so your thumb can gently rest, almost pushing against, keeping the wrist straight for when you work. So when transitioning through to the back, what I need to do is find myself a guideline. So I've taken a piece from the top that I've already cut, which is through there. And we're gonna use that piece to transition through to the back to create a shape. So same again, I'm gonna work on back left this time. Now, depending on what you're wanting to do, because I've collapsed the front of the shape, so everything's gonna be hugging the face, this through the back, I prefer on long hair to expand the shape, which just because from profile, personally, I think it looks better. So this side, I'm gonna cut everything from out to in to push the cuticle away from the head. Now I've created my centre profile section extending through to the back of the head. What I'm doing is splitting that into two. So I've got one section here, one section here. The reason why, the curvature of the head changes again here. So the way I cut this, 
I have to understand why I'm cutting this the way I'm cutting it to understand why I'm cutting this the way I'm gonna cut it. So depending on your projection will depend on how this layer sits. So you can over direct and then over direct the sides back in. That's gonna give you increased layer at every point or you can cut it square but over direct the sides back in. Both will give you increased layers. One will create more of a hug shape, one will create more of a rounder shape. So squarer will go round, increased like that will create a longer effect. So I'm gonna project this out square from the head. The reason why, like I said, I want that rounder shape profile wise, and this is what a lot of hairdressers forget. It's not just what you see in the mirror is what people are looking at. It's a 360 view of your haircut. So you need to think about the way it looks from profile section. I prefer the hair coming back out and then hugging as it gets closer to the shoulders. So we're gonna go square out here. Projection guidelines there. Cutting out to in. Put that section back up again. Now I'm gonna work on far right first, pulling everything back in. I'm gonna stay on a level through there and segregate this underneath section. So over directing everything back into the middle, check my guideline, cut it, same again. Check your guideline, cut. So I'm still using my pivot on my left foot. And I'm taking a section through here. Still making sure that second section that I've put out from the first center profile is out, following that line around, coming back in. Final section. <clears throat> so once this is done, there's two ways of doing this. You can either try and connect this into there. I personally, I like fail safes. So I'm taking half of that section away, putting it out of the way, just so I know that I can get that whole section in and make one cut. I don't have to keep resection every single time. So first section of my second subsection, section, 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 <laughs> section. So moving on to the underneath piece here, I'm gonna make sure that it's still square from the head. I still wanna create a square shape. So pulling it straight out. Guideline checked. And then all you're going to do is move around this section and over direct everything back into the middle like you did with the sections above. Notice how I'm keeping my body square, I'm not leaning over. See the difference in the, where the head changes when I lean over, the slack? You wanna make sure that your tension's good all the way through. So make sure your body's square. Guideline check. Still keeping my left foot planted. Now if you can't keep your left foot planted, don't stress. It's not like it's a rule, it's just you need to be very aware of where you were to, at the very beginning so you can come back to that position. So I'm gonna switch to wide tooth comb now. As soon as that's, the head starts moving for me, that's when I know there's too much hair for a shallow tooth. Body square, checked it. Now moving on to your last section of the top. So you're gonna take your center profile section back out, comb everything else out of the way. So where the head gets round, we're gonna take that out as well. Now remember I pulled this side, same rule applies to the back as what it does the front. Pull this side, push this side, so everything's going back into your section. Square. Guidelines clear. And cut. Next section. I've direct and push the hair back in. See, <clears throat> I didn't get the tension right there. Always reset. 
your tension's not right, don't stress, just reset. Check. Cut. And last section of this. So switch to wide tooth. Over direct and push everything back into the middle. So I'm going to do exactly what I did to this section is what I did to this. So I'm going to split this section in half to create my guideline. Took that out of the way. Middle section. Make sure my body is square. The hair is square from the head. There's my guideline. Cut. And all you're going to do is keep feeding all the hair back into the centre. So Tom, with this one, is it a is it a mobile guideline there, or you're you're pushing it all back to that one spot in the centre? Stationary. So carry on, keep moving it all the way through to the middle. That's the back done. Now I've done my internal shape, I've dropped my radial section out, which has brought the length into play. I'm gonna blow dry this out first, and I'm gonna cut the length dry. The reason why I like to give my guests as many options and length as possible, this allows you to do that. So now we've done the main body of the haircut, we're gonna to move to the baseline. So we're going to use the principle of directional cutting when we're cutting the baseline. So we're going to be cutting in to out through the back part of the head to the corner, then in to out to this corner at the back. Then we're going to go in from out to in to push the hair back on itself this way. Now it makes more of a difference when your scissors aren't the right scissor. Because I'm using the Stingray, your cue, Okay, the Stingray, with its very unique blade shape with a small blade and a large blade, meaning that as the blade closes, the angle stays the same the whole way. With a normal pair of scissors, as that angle goes finer, it pushes the hair along the blade. So what this will do is stop any movement. Now, we all have this talk about directional cutting and which way to go in to out. The one positive with the Stingray is if you use this correctly and you start at the base, you don't get that movement of the hair. So the directional movement of the hair is a lot less emphasized. So you can, in fact, cut something knowing that it's not going to move as much as what it would with a normal scissor. So this whole principle is really, really important to know. But know that when you're using a baseline with a stingray, it is alleviated somewhat. So we're going to go straight to the back. I found my center point. Now, when you're cutting baselines, you need to be line of sight as much as you can. When you're using a, uh, in, the, in the salon with a guest, you can have a pump up of the chair, you can have them standing up. With a mannequin head, you need to drop your knees. So I bent my knees, we're gonna go in, we found the middle of our hair. So I'm cutting the comb. The reason why I'm cutting the comb compared to fingers is when I'm cutting the comb, everything can stay square, and on a client, that hair is pushed up against the shoulders. So I've got a really nice, even, plain feel to cut across. As soon as you go into your fingers, your fingers are then pushing the hair away from the shoulders so you're creating graduation. So cutting the comb, scissor behind, knocking the hair back into the comb, going straight all the way down, making sure my comb is square, my body's square to the section, that way, scissor square, one cut. Now into the other side, so cutting the comb, Straight back down. Now this time, I'm going in to out, so I'm raising my elbow, bringing my scissor in this way, clean cut. Same again, going all the way to the corner of the head. Checking my line, making sure it's square. I think it's really important at this point to acknowledge that what a straight line actually is. So when we're cutting a straight line on the base, we are coming 
clean across the hair. Tom uses that comb as a guide to actually level it out. So many people when they're cutting a straight line come around that corner, which creates a round shape. So Tom lifts the elbow when he's cutting one way, means that comb is directly straight. You follow that guide the whole time. This is straight, that isn't. It also stops with graduation because when people start to come around a corner, what they tend to do is they tend to not have the correct body posture as well. So as they come around the corner, they lean in, they change the angle of the scissor, which has a massive effect on what you're doing there. It, it almost like that whole story of, you know, a client comes in and one side kicks in and one side kicks out and people are like, oh, this is the way your hair grows. Uh, it's actually the way you cut. So make sure you're very, very straight. You're not cutting corners and not changing the angle whenever you do exactly it. Right. So you can see here where I've cut to. So I've gone to the corner of the head on each side. When you come through to these bits, what a lot of people tend to do is go through to here and then cut straight across. But you actually want to create extra length through here. So the, there's your corner. Put my comb in and now you see I'm twisting back on myself. So I'm extending that line all the way through. Clean cut. Then once you've got to that point, you can move over to the side. So you can see my line is square all the way through. It's not going to lift up at all. Use that as your guide to finish your front off. Comb in, straight down. Now, actually a good point with this is, a lot of people when they do this, they still always leave that part of their comb higher. So my advice would always be, once you think you're straight, drop this end of your comb just by a couple of mil. The hair naturally will not sit forward. Everyone wants their hair off their face when it comes to the baseline. Nothing ever sits just here. So always make sure you've got extra length through this front bit as a fail safe. So straight in, and I'm dropping my comb just a couple of mil there, and I'm going out to in on this side. Clean off. So I need to get that corner piece in again. So I'm still still behind the head. Comb in. Scissor behind, continue my line on. Move through to the sides. Dropping my comb down slightly. There you have it, there's your baseline. So now I've finished my base on, I've reassessed it, I've checked the lengths at the front, and you can see here where I've dropped my comb, it's given me a little bit of extra length through there. It's slightly longer than this side, so what I'm gonna do is go back in, just fix that up, just to make sure it's completely square. Having that, because that's my weaker side of cutting, always means that if I have to fix anything up at all, it's always going back to my stronger side. It's never me trying to fix my strong side to my weak side. <clears throat> so I'm just going back in again, Finding that extra little bit of length. Taking it clean off, out to in. Done. Beautiful. Now we're gonna move on to the fringe. So this is a teardrop technique. It's really simple, but there's very, very key indicators in this. You have to be square, right through the middle of the head. If you deviate either side, what you'll do is you'll cut your teardrop wherever you've deviated to. I'm going to use my anaconda, but Ooh. I believe Pete has something to say about this. Okay, it's interesting because we developed the anaconda originally. Um, I'll take that off you. Thanks, man. We developed this as a curly head scissor originally, um, and it's pretty unique in terms of it's got two 45 degree edge blades at the base. On one side, which is your thumb blade, it's actually completely blunt. The other, it's 30 degrees, like a slicing scissor. Probably one of the beauty of having ambassadors and stuff like that as well as what we can do is we'll make something for a particular purpose. Someone will come out and try it and go, you know what? I like it for this, <laughs> which is great. And so look at each of their own with all this sort of stuff. But when Tom explained why, which he'll go into now, it actually makes so much sense as to why you'd use the Anaconda for this because of the grip at the base and then the push at the end. So um, I learn something new every day. Oh, there yes. you go. I'm only joking. I didn't. <laughs> 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 so, with the teardrop, now, what Pete was talking about with the blades, what I'm going to be doing is taking this entire section, projecting it out 
square to the head or 45 degrees away from the floor, depending on how you think. And I'm going to be holding it in one point and I'm scooping out all the hair. But what I do is I edge the hair first and then with the blade at the end, because it's a slicing scissor, it just kind of finishes the ends off really well through here. Everything you're doing, because if you think about directional cutting, we're cutting from out to in. What does that do? Explode a shape. So I'm actually doing this to push the shape out. You don't want to flatten the shape when you're trying to create something that moves away from the face. This is really good for anyone with long hair, with layers or blunt. It adds a lot of shape to the hair without it being too much of a difference. <clears throat> Everything has to be square. So when you put your comb in, it has to be square and down the middle of the head. You put your fingers in, it has to be square and down the middle of the head. When you project out, it has to be square. See how everything's congregating in the middle? Watch when I get one of them wrong. If I get my comb wrong, then I try and square off. You can see how everything from this side gets dragged into the middle, and then from this side gets sprayed out to the outer. So this is why it's so important to be square when you're picking this up. So once again, comb in, I'm using my shallow tooth. I've got quite a bit of grip in there, and I'm angling the back end of my comb straight down the nose. Fingers are gonna go in, and then I'm gonna project out. Now, <clears throat> to check your length, you can go as short as you want with this really, or you can leave it as long as you want. I'm gonna go, oh, you need to think about what you want to bring out on a client's face. We're gonna aim for around about cheekbone area. So when you drop your fingers, wherever your fingers hit is the part of the face you're going to be opening up. So because I wanna be a little bit higher than that, reset, go down, perfect. So I'm in line with the cheekbones there. Comb in, fingers in, make sure I'm square. Now, this is the trick. So you want the hair to be bent over like that. You're gonna put the base of your scissor there. So you don't wanna be halfway up the scissor, you need to be at the very, very base of your scissor. Now from there, you're gonna make, you're not gonna move your fingers, you're just gonna make small movements with your thumb, cut in and pretty much cut a C into this. So I'm going in, I'm angling my scissors out. And when I get to the end, I'll start closing the scissor. And it just slices that very end off. So you can see now, see how you got that C in there? You can go deeper if you wish. Now, <clears throat> When you drop this back, pull my clips out the side. Comb it back. It pushes forward and it goes into normal shape. You can see how that fans straight out. So you've got the curvature in there, which links in with the base on through there. So it's shaping and a fringe all in one. And see. <laughs>